For most patients, the first interaction with your practice is the telephone. This is your opportunity to create a good first impression on a new patient. There's a world of difference between doctor's office, please hold, and good morning. This is Dr. Baum's office. This is Brittany speaking. How may I help you? The first response implies that the staff is overworked and distracted. The second response, which is the one used in my office, is warm and inviting and makes the patient feel welcome the moment they call. The telephone is the lifeline of your practice. I would like to share with you a six step technique to making a good first impression on first time callers to your practice. First, the most important technique is for your receptionist to answer the telephone with enthusiasm and a smile. Yes, I mean that literally. If you have a smile on your face, this will come through the phone lines. You will want your callers to feel the receptionist's warmth and compassion. How do you put a smile in a voice? Although this idea may seem elusive or intangible, a well-trained receptionist should be able to communicate warmth and friendliness by the tone in his or her voice. Not everyone can do this, of course. Much depends on the person hired for the job. But for the right phone answer with the right personality, you can encourage him or her to smile when answering the telephone by simply putting a small mirror near the phone. This provides necessary visual feedback. Number two, have the receptionist identify the time of day and the name of the practice. Examples, good morning. This is Dr. Baum's office or good afternoon. This is the New Orleans Urology Clinic. Third, the receptionist should identify him or herself and if appropriate, give his or her title. All callers like to know to whom they are speaking. Also, because the reception is no longer anonymous, this technique encourages him or her to be polite and courteous. Fourth, the receptionist should then ask how he or she can be of assistance to the caller. Fifth, the receptionist should jot down the caller's name immediately and then make an effort to use the name at least twice during the conversation. The most important word in any language is the sound of the caller's own name. The more you mention a person's name in a conversation, the more likely you are to connect with that person. When the receptionist uses the caller's name during the phone conversation, the caller feels special. Sixth, make every effort to answer the phone within three rings. If you have an automatic messaging service, be certain it is programmed to roll over to the voicemail on the fourth ring. Finally, a few words about phone tree. In brief, do not use them. Callers are typically exposed to phone trees multiple times each day. The last place they want a phone tree is at a doctor's office. If you decide you must use one, at least give the caller the option of opting out of the phone tree and speaking to a human in the office. This option should be the first option and not relegated to the end of the phone tree selections. My opinion, trees are made for acorns and fruit, not for telephone calls with patients. One more tip. On every phone in my office, there's a sign on the handset that says, telephone is equal to opportunity. This is a reminder of the importance of good telephone technique. Bottom line, the telephone is the opportunity to create a first impression of the doctors and the practice. Never forget that you don't get a second chance to make a good 
first impression. Nothing is more vital to your practice than using the best telephone techniques and the best telephone etiquette.